Hi there, this is David and welcome back to Let's Play Wild Arms XF. Last time we fell into a hole and uh, now we have yet another puzzle dungeon because, you know, the game can't possibly let you go a whole chapter without doing a puzzle dungeon. Couldn't have that. So make sure that you have Labyrinthia all set up because she's going to be your key to victory. Okay, I'm all set up and ready to roll. Let's do this puzzle. Yeah, this is probably the last puzzle in the game, but, you know, eh, it's a nice send-off. It's not too difficult, so that's pretty nice. You know, you hate whenever they're so difficult that they're just a uh, pain in the ass. But this one isn't bad. As long as you have, um, what's-her-face, uh, Labyrinthia with warp, then you should be fine. Go ahead and have him wait, and Labyrinthia is going to all the way across. We'll stick it right there. There we go. And Aphelius, uh, yeah, let's have you. Well, when is your next turn? Come on. Oh, she's so slow. I can't stand it. Okay, let's, uh, let's see about turn shifting and we do that. Do have turn shift perfect? But I can't turn shift to her. Okay, so we need to move over just one little space, and I'm gonna turn shift to Alexia. So what you wanna do is first hit the switches over here, and then we want the other people to uh, head on over. Nobody's going to do this for us. Once they're on a switch, then, um, let's see. I don't think that you're gonna teleport yet, because Clarissa's already standing on the teleporter. So she can't teleport again, so you're just gonna have to wait. And same thing here, you're just gonna have to wait. Ugh, Levin, wait. There we go. So Lorithia is going to be, let's see, she also has to have emulation. Uh, we're going to have to light this little torch right there. There we go. And bench, okay, wait. You're on switch, you're good. And you head over here. And I'll go ahead and have her, uh, Now let's get Levin on this teleporter. Oh, yeah. Now it actually, you know, came in hand. Hang out there. And you want the red thing to start moving over here towards the next warp point. And feeling us on the teleporter. Ragnar and Alexia are going to be doing nothing for the rest of the, uh, rest of this stage. They're literally just going to be so, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, we want Alexia further along. This is going to take Helios a while to get down there. Um, let's see. Yeah, no, just wait. Okay, you can go there. Whatever. I don't really care what you do. go. And you're going to want... There's the warp point that she needs to get to because she can't walk across on her own, unfortunately. So you just kind of have to wait until Helios gets on the warp point. So it's going to take a little bit. Uh, for his turn to come around. Why does it look like he can this many turns whenever it's normally her turn? It's kind of, you know, whenever it's a normal battle. It's kind of strange. Anyway, just keep on going. Okay, perfect. Wait there, that will activate that warp point there, and then Labyrinthia can move right along. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. Perfect. Okay, right there. You literally need to skip everybody else's turn because they're completely useless. And uh, just have a walk over here, and if she can reach, that'd be really nice if she can reach with a uh, hydro pressure. No, she can't. Okay, so just move again. Okay, get her all the way up here, and then you want her to head over to the right. There is a flaming pot. You want to cast hydro pressure on it. Get rid of the fire. And now head over to the left and just cast Elect Trigger on the attack switch. And that's all you have to do. It's that simple. If you want to warp over there and grab that treasure, you can. But it just has, it has like a steady belt on it. And I really don't care about armor for classes that I don't use. So, yeah, not going to bother. At this point in the game, if you use it, get it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Well, Chevrolet Blanc, it certainly took you long enough. The preparations are already complete. My army of undead is ready to begin your funeral procession. How could you animate this many corpses? The death energy that pervades Schnell is almost completely pure. Mustering an army out of it was no great challenge. But let's skip the elegy, Chevalier Blanc. 
it's time to add you to their ranks. What? <laughs> you? You again? I cut some pages out of your precious little book. With the shape it's in now, it looks like it might be having trouble containing all that power. Why would you... I'm done following you, Charlton. Maybe you can give your nobility of the spirit speech to your undead minions now. If you don't mind, I'm going to take off a little early. Oh, and I'm taking all the treasure that we plundered from the capital with me. <laughs> I don't know what I ever saw in this wretched country in the first place. Maybe I'll take a trip to some faraway land and start over. Do me a big favor and buy me as much time as you can, okay? And no! Between Chevalier Blanc and that horde of undead you can no longer control, you'll have plenty of debutantes to dance with at your nobleman's ball. They seem a good fit for a man of your stature. She's such a bitch. I love her. Charlton. Yeah, light up some more weed. Sure. <sighs> I was born into a widely despised family that was nobility in name alone. House Blunt dwelled in the shadow of Elysius, serving as spies and assassins. On my 15th birthday, the secret arts of life negation were bestowed upon me. My arm has been rotting away ever since. From that day on, I have been admonished repeatedly never to expose myself to the light of day in Elysius. They claimed that with my rotten arm, any future I could grasp would rot to dust in my hands. Ha! Oh, what an absurd thing to say, when Elysius itself has been rotting away for centuries. But it was precisely because they exhorted me not to that I have spent my life climbing to the sunlit surface of this world. And eventually I made my way to this lofty position, but there is still higher to climb. To keep my house from sinking into the shadows, I must set my sights on higher and brighter peaks still. This drawn-out chat is ruining a good cigarette. I think it's time to wrap things up. Prepare yourselves, Chevrolet Blanc. Where'd your cigarette go anyway? Just kind of dropped it. Oh, God almighty. Ugh. So there's an easy way to take care of this battle and a hard way to take care of this battle. And I will, of course, be doing the very easy way. If you want to, you can go around anchor hooking all over the place and killing all these guys and going over and killing Charlton. Um, but I don't think that I'm going to do that. I'm going to do something else. Okay, let's get ready for like the easiest battle ever. And what I'm going to do is actually fast forward the battle, because this one will take quite some time. The strategy consists of doing absolutely nothing. What you're going to do is move all your characters, corral them over into this, like, alcove niche over there, and then the enemies cannot touch you. They will not hit you, they will not bother you, they will not come after you, they will do absolutely nothing to you. However, they will attack Charlton. And at first, they won't do much damage to him, about 40 or so damage. But as Charlton uses his attacks and kills the undead, then they will get stat boosts and deal about 300-something damage to him and utterly destroy Charlton. Now, if you did want to go after Charlton and not use a strategy, then you would be dealing with these undead who respawn, tons of them by the way, and his all-hitting attack, which would hit you for about 175 damage. And considering that some of your characters, like Labyrinthia, only has about 200 or so HP, that could really kill you and really do you in. So it's so much easier, so much better, so much nicer just to hang out and do nothing for this battle. Um, it's kind of a, you know, bad way of Charles to go, but as you can see here, he's killing all the different zombies, but they all return to life. And now they come back bigger, badder, stronger, better than ever. Bam! They're hitting with formation arts for about 350, so he's pretty much down for the count. It's not going to be long now until uh, he's dead. So, yeah. It's just uh, a little... It might be a little bit cheap, but hey, it is what it is. He's pulled cheap crap on us in the past, so now it's our turn for some revenge. And down it goes. 
sit? It's going to end in the cesspit? I think the uh, term is cesspit. Not cesspit. What's a cesspit? Okay. Awesome. Oh, one CSP. I'm so glad I wasted all those potential eggs. You poor man. Your life ended in the same darkness in which it began. I guess we need to return them to the darkness, too. Well, that's one way to do it. Why can't you do that earlier? That's all it took. I wonder what sort of life you might have led if you had at least been able to hold someone's hand. Seriously? That's what you're talking about? Holding someone's hand? Get over it, Clarissa. Whoa, Let's slow down. Force. I can understand you wanting to get out of there, but there's no need to run so fast. Hey, what's that? <gasps> Holy crap! Is that Katrina? A hole gouged into the sky? Is... is that even possible? As capable a woman as I am, I've never seen nor heard of anything like that. Oh my god, shoot me in the head. I hate the radio. Don't tell me Katrina did this! She didn't. That's an out-of-control dimensional transport gate. As far as I know, there's only one person who could do such a thing. Must be vice height. That, uh, asthmospheric hole was kind of disconcerting, I must say. Several days after the hole appeared in the sky. What's this, like, Antarctica? The ozone hole? What's going on here? So as a contingency measure, I would like the Royal Knights to direct the evacuation. Understood. And what about you, Your Highness? We've received a report from the survey expedition that was investigating the spiraling singularity. The hole, if you will. They've determined that the hole is located directly above Mount Urartu, and that it's slowly growing in size. Mount Urartu? Does that mean something to you, Father? Your Highness, I am embarrassed to report this as it was a shameful moment for the Royal Knights, but... Earlier, when we were tracking the movements of Weisheit, we infiltrated a secret hideout of his in Mount Urartu. A hideout of Weisheit's? That was where he took you down and made you turn against the princess, right? Hey, don't interrupt. We had heard legends of a mechanical ship at the base of Mount Urartu, which is why we went to investigate there in the first place. A mechanical ship? Yes. Stories of a mechanical ship falling from the heavens and crashing into the mountains several hundred years ago are still told in nearby settlements. The shape of the vessel was said to resemble a dragon. The Lombardia. Phileas. The Lombardia was my ship, and it's presumably what brought Crescent to Filgaia as well. Crescent, the man who now calls himself Weisheit. And now there's a hole in the sky. Are we to assume that somehow he's involved again? But isn't Weisheit... But outside of Weisheit, no one on Filgaia would be able to use Eluborian technology. This is his doing, it has to be. And now we know where he is. Let's go. We're the only ones who are available at the moment, so this is something that only we can do. Weisheit has run roughshod over Filgaia for far too long. We need to put an end to this. Levin. Don't try to stop me, Father! I have to do this to protect our world! That's the path you've chosen. I won't try to stop you. But do come home from time to time. The anniversary of your mother's death is coming up, you know. But you said I wasn't welcome. You took a key to the mansion when you left, didn't you? Uh... I let you take that key, so you could come home whenever you were ready. Father, that's hardly disowning me. Now is it? But... thanks. Maybe we should throw a party or something on Mother's anniversary this year. Your mother was a lot like you. She always lived for excitement. I think a party would make her happy. 
Then we'll do it as soon as I get back. For now, I better get moving. Okay, so we will get moving and uh, head over to Mount Uratu and take care of Ice Height next time. Let's play Wild Arms XF. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And happy watching.